Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, this is Car Addict. Uh, I got some information to share on my uh, RV6 downpipe testing I did a long time ago. Finally sat down and finished it all, almost. Uh, but I gotta read my little sheet right here. So I'll have to do that after I stop somewhere. All right, before we go back to the other uh, talking, let's go around these corners real quick. So now for the uh, RV6 downpipe test results. Um, so before I put the downpipe on, 21 pound starter map loaded, knock control learned down, full pump, full tank, I mean, of uh, 92 pump gas. So now third and fourth gear, both I basically went wide open at two grand, and then at about 20 pounds or whatever, when I thought it was fully spooled, I let off. Slowed down about two, uh, two grand. Did it again, over and over and forth. And then I did it over and over in third. Second gear, I started at 2,500, and then I just went to 5,500. So now, this first graph is actually the intake air temps versus stock testing and RV6 testing. You can see the intake air temp is pretty far off. It's like 17 degrees. So what I did, after I'd done some graphing, I figured this is stupid and pointless to waste my time unless I can verify what the difference in intake air temp actually did. So I went back out after the RV6 downpipe was on, obviously, redid the 21 pound starter map, then untouched. I never did a drop down a modification, I never changed anything. Uh, again, full tank of 92 from the same station whether or not it was still the same actual fuel in their tank or not I couldn't tell you but this time with the RV6 downpipe I actually had the intake air temp basically where it was for the stock testing And you can see that on these two graphs I'm going to show you, which are the uh, RV6 downpipe on both just the high and low intake air temps. One's got spool and ignition on it, and one's got spool and uh, acceleration on it. There is minor, minor differences, but it's basically like the exact same results. So that 17 degrees of air intake temperature changed didn't really do much. So today I went back to making more graphs. So now uh, these are fourth gear graphs and for the rest of the graphs, the intake air temp is divided by two. I just did that to lower the uh, scale of the graph so that basically instead of the air intake being at 40 it would be at 80 but all the differences between acceleration ignition and all those would be halved because the scale of the graph would be so much higher everything down low would be shrunk together so here we go this one I'm about to show you is just uh, all the runs of uh, the sp spool when stock All right, this one, same thing. It's the spool time of the different runs, but with the RV6 downpipe. All right, here is them averaged and overlaid with each other. All 
Now the rest of these still have the uh, spool times averaged out, but this one shows the average knock control and the average ignition of both as well. Here's another one that shows the average spool time along with the average intake air temp divided by two and the average vehicle speed so you can see the acceleration of the two. And then now this one basically just shows the acceleration difference. And it's the average acceleration between the five or six runs of each uh, stock and RV6. All right, so then we can move on to third gear, and it's basically the same exact uh, layout as last time. Here's one of all the different spool times when stock. So now here's one of all the different spool times with the RV6 downpipe. Again, I averaged them and overlaid just those. And then added knock control and ignition to one. And then I did it again and added intake air temp and vehicle speed. And then finally, just purely the third gear acceleration. So by this time, I was getting kind of lazy on making these because I would have to... I don't know how to graph with Excel. I'll admit it right now. I can't do it. I don't know how, why I can't. So... The convoluted way I had to do this was um, I'd open the log in, uh, I'd actually open it in Data Zap just because it's easier for me to use than the KTuner software for me. And then I'd find what section, there, it looks like a bunch of waves because I'd be pulling in second over and over. I'd highlight that and then I'd use, uh, put the times stamp up there, use the cursor to find out <laughs> what time. Then on a piece of paper, I'd write down the rough time at the beginning of each pull I need to look at. Then I'd have to open it up in a CSV viewer, go to those times, and see what actual cell I was in. So if like 178 seconds might be cell 7,000. Okay, so then I gotta find what cell I wanna start at, and then I picked 60 cells for most of them, and I'd go 60 cells later, and then I'd write by my first time the cells. I'd do that for all six pulls of the stock one. Then I'd get a spreadsheet out, copy and paste all the different data from every different pull, from every piece of information I wanted. Then I'd have to average them. And since I don't know how to graph in Excel, I had to start a new website, not start it, but go to a new website <laughs> where I could graph. And I'd have to copy and paste all them different things over and over and change all the labels. And it takes a long time. So long story short, uh, Second gear got a little bit lazy, so the only graphs I have from second is the average spool with the average vehicle speed. And the average spool with the average ignition. Alright, so there's all the data. Um, obviously, the car sounds better. Plus, obviously, it, from here, you can see it spools a lot faster. It accelerates a little faster. Um, I got no regrets on having it. The only thing that sucks so far is that RV6 still hasn't released the next step in their modular system. So I don't have three inches all the way back like you could have done with PRL. And I, I don't really mean to bash PRL here. And... Um, I understand it doesn't really have to look pretty to be strong, but um, they did say a while back they pulled in some swing shift welders to hurry up and make a bunch of downpipes. But if you just take a look at this weld on a PRL uh, front pipe, 
and then look at the weld on the RV6 downpipe. RV6's welder that welded mine makes PRL's welder that welded that one look like an amateur. Doesn't mean their pipe isn't good, will break, nothing like that. It's just, that's one more thing. It's basically the only thing I can think the RV6 has over PRL is it has the ability to run the heat shield and the welds look a little better. So aside from that, whatever. All right, well, that's where I'm going to leave you so that uh, you're not going to listen to me ramble anymore. Uh, please subscribe. Take care. I will see you guys later. All right.